I'm here, as you heard, to talk about generation resilience. And this talk is based on some research that WP Engine has undertaken for each of the last four years, in fact, um, in order to better understand digital trends and how consumers are engaging in a digital world and a technology world, which is rapidly evolving. And, you know, I'm excited to be here for the first time because of all the original research we do, and we do a fair, fair bit, uh, this research on generations, uh, and in particular Gen Z, is always the one that gets people most interested and excited. So um, this is brand new. Uh, this is our latest 2021 research, which I'm sharing for the first time. It's only been released this week, um, so I'm excited to show what has changed since the pandemic. And I guess to start with, to get everybody on the same page about generational definitions, because there's a few different ones out there, uh, I'm going to talk through ours, which is based on the Center for Generational Kinetics. Uh, they are the organization that we worked with for each of the last four years in order to conduct this research. And they do similar research on how the generations um, are different and similar, of course, uh, across a whole range of different fields. And, you know, they've been a great partner for us to work with. But, you know, their definition is uh, baby boomers, obviously the birth cohort that started after the Second World War, um, following the uh, spike in the birth rate and, you know, declined from about 1964 onwards, following, uh, you know, the introduction of the pill and, you know, surge in birth control. And, you know, this generation, as everyone probably knows, is, uh, you know, known well for the, you know, birth of rock and roll and, you know, the assassination of JFK. And these are kind of the seminal events of this generation. And interestingly, you know, you can essentially identify generations uh, by these kind of zeitgeists or generational shifts that occur um, in general. Now, Generation X, um, I'm going to volunteer, they're my generation, I am going to claim to be a young Generation X, but uh, I, I'm, I am unfortunately in that cohort. Uh, they were born from 1965 to 1976, and are known as the latchkey generation because there are a lot of, um, you know, broken homes, divorced parents, and a lot of, uh, you know, kids in that generation actually, uh, uh, you know, were left at home uh, for long periods of time by by themselves. And, you know, this, this generation is the last one to live in a purely analog world, which is really kind of key when it comes to understanding the differences with millennials and, and Gen Z in particular. Uh, now, you know, millennials, uh, you know, have had a lot of attention, I guess, in the media and elsewhere over the last 10 years or so, um, and have a bit of an unfair reputation as an entitled generation. Um, but, you know, born between 1977 and 1995, the oldest of them are now well into their 40s. And, uh, you know, they've, they've obviously emerged as a dominant uh, generation of, of consumers. And, you know, more recently, uh, age 25 and under, we've got Generation Z, which is now emerging to kind of take the mantle as the biggest uh, constituents of the workforce and the biggest uh, consumer audience uh, over the years and decades to come. Uh, an interesting way to know the difference between millennials and Gen Z is uh, if you remember the 9-11 attacks, uh, you're a millennial uh, or older, of course. Uh, if it's a history lesson, then you're Gen Z. Um, so, you know, it's a nice, simple way of, of remembering. But, uh, you know, Gen Z, their kind of key cultural event from a technology perspective and a digital perspective was the launch of the iPhone in 2006, which, you know, promised life in your pocket. And, you know, this generation has therefore never grown up without constant mobile internet connection. 96% of them own a smartphone. You know, there is no online or offline for them. You know, it's, it's life in their pocket without, without boundaries. So we undertook this research and we undertook it in the US, in Australia, in Europe and, and the UK. And uh, I would love to hear from people uh, in different regions how they feel this, this research may may be similar or different, but um, for the most part across those regions, the, the data was largely the same. Um, you know, there are some differences, which I will talk to as we go through the talk, but, you know, in terms of the survey itself uh, that we worked with the Generation, sorry, Center for Generational Kinetics on, uh, you know, we, we spoke to a thousand participants in each region, which makes it statistically accurate within plus or minus 3%. And essentially, it was census balanced. So, you know, male, female, different 
you know, generations were represented by their uh, proportion of the overall, uh, you know, population. And I am going to talk to the Australian research today. That's where I am in, in sunny Brisbane. Um, as I say, the generation is fairly common uh, and similar across the key markets. Um, but that's what I'm going to talk about in this, in this conversation today. Now, you know, the important thing for us from a WP Engine perspective, you know, people ask us, why did you undertake this research? And there's a few reasons behind that. You know, firstly, we want to understand how the generations have adapted to digital, particularly in the last year through the pandemic. You know, this helps us when we're building our, our product roadmap for our platform, um, you know, so that we can incorporate the different digital needs and trends that we see, you know, coming um, through the younger generations primarily. And, you know, we also want to understand, you know, how, you know, specific online and offline behaviors have changed in areas like e-commerce, for example, which again, you know, directly impacts our business. But again, more importantly, you know, it's great research to be able to share with the wider WordPress and digital community uh, to help everyone better serve the needs of different generations and understand where they're similar and where they're different. All right. So. The first um, point I really wanted to cover, and this is kind of like a, a headline into the rest of the presentation, I guess, um, is that, you know, with the like, younger generations in particular, we're really seeing this blurring between the online world and the offline world to the extent where, you know, for Gen Z in particular and to an extent millennials, the digital experience is really, you know, the same as the human experience. They're, they're you know, indistinguishable. They're, they're one and the same because they're so tightly in, intertwined with technology and digital. And, you know, this is important to understand, you know, millennials and Gen Z are already a powerful economic force, as I mentioned. And, you know, with the resurgence of the, you know, economy post-COVID and, you know, and them continuing to, 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 you know, grow up and, um, you know, increase their purchasing power, their influence increases every day. And this is important for brands and businessmen and business-led women to, to understand. And, you know, to win more share of wallet from millennials and Gen Z, we really need to create new customer uh, engagement experiences that are powered by responsive, modern, scalable business and technology. And that's really a key takeaway uh, that we have in terms of how we help our customers. Another important point is that understanding and winning Gen Z and millennials now leads to winning every other generation as well, because these are the influential trendsetters. Uh, you know, the outsized impact that Gen Z and millennials have is really critical, uh, you know, for leaders to separate generational myth from truth and, you know, to better serve them as, as customers and consumers. And there's really three key trends that we talk about. First of all is resilience. So, you know, how has digital connected a generation that has been locked down for a considerable period of time and how have we seen things change through the pandemic? Uh, the second area I'll dive into is the rebuild. So, you know, how are digital habits changed forever and what impact does that have on our lives moving forward? And thirdly, rise, how does this impact Gen Z as they, uh, you know, emerge, as I say, into their 20s and, you know, soon into their 30s? And, you know, we've seen some really interesting trends around things like entrepreneurialism uh, as well, which, which I will share. All right, so to dive into the first of these, resilience, um, you know, people have experienced obviously unprecedented change um, during the last year and a half, and technology has really been at the forefront of the reconstruction of people's lives and culture. And, you know, in order to better understand this and the evolving digital trends that arise, uh, we were wanted to understand, firstly, how technology dependence uh, compares to previous uh, years. Now, it's probably no surprise to know that overall internet dependency is increasing. And, you know, there's kind of a banner line here, right, which is people can go three days without water, but only four days without, four hours without internet. Um, because, you know, almost half, 45% of the respondents in our survey could not comfortably go more than four hours without being, uh, you know, connected, um, became uncomfortable at that point. And interestingly, this percentage has remained fairly stable over the four years that we've been doing this survey. 
Um, but the biggest change that we saw in 2021 was this significant move from you know two to four hours to one hour or less. So you know this is why we're saying that the dependency is increasing because you know whilst the under uh, under four hours figure has remained largely the same, more and more of that. Uh, more and more of the population are saying they cannot comfortably go more than an hour without being online. Now, one of the first surprise findings from the research, I guess, was that Gen Z is not the most internet dependent generation, or at least it's not on the Australian data. This is one of the areas where there is a difference between the regions in which we undertook the research. Um, in any region, clearly Gen Z and millennials combined are the most uh, dependent. Uh, but interestingly, you know, what we saw in, in the data here was that for Gen Z, there was an increasing awareness of, you know, the need to, you know, turn off. Um, and, you know, people are backing off in some cases, as you can see, the one hour or less, uh, you know, result has, has dropped to 18% for Gen Z versus 27% for, for millennials. So, you know, and, and this was borne out by a specific question in our survey where, you know, two thirds of Gen Z and millennials reported that they plan to reduce the amount of time they spend online in the future. And it seems that Gen Z has, you know, been more successful with that perhaps to date than, than millennials have. But I'd love to see in particular what people, uh, you know, see in different regions, uh, you know, on this question. Now, one of the other critical differences with Gen Z versus other generations, and this really impacts marketers and, and, and business businesses, is when they think about how to market to them. Uh, every generation apart from Gen Z views the internet or depends on it primarily for accessing information, uh, as you can see. Now, Gen Z is very different. They rely on it primarily for entertainment. Um, and after that, for social connections. Uh, with access to information, you know, down in third place. So, you know, when we're thinking about building digital experiences on websites um, as a marketer for the, just this generation, we have to be thinking how we do it through the lens of entertainment. Uh, some other areas that we saw uh, that kind of reinforce this was, you know, very high expectations from Gen Z for, you know, the internet or web of the future to be more human-like by displaying emotions, for example. Uh, we saw over 50%. Uh, you know, expect this to happen in the next five years. And, you know, again, this causes interesting questions for brand, you know, marketers, you know, how do you position your brand in terms of, you know, emotions it might portray? How do you, you know, deliver content in a way that is more engaging and fun uh, if you're trying to target this demographic? Uh, interestingly, the work from home has not really uh, affected the result for access to business, which remains the lowest category. Um, so, uh, you know, typically five to seven percent uh, of the generation see the Internet as being primarily for, for business. And, you know, this this growth, I guess, of, of you know, consumption of you know, content that, that is, you know, entertaining in nature has, you know, really, you know, been demonstrated by either growth of streaming services during the pandemic. So for the first time, we passed a billion uh, worldwide in, in 2020 uh, with massive growth for, you know, all of the major providers, you know, Netflix, Prime Video, Hulu, Disney Plus, and, and, and so on. And, you know, another interesting trend that we saw uh, for Gen Z in particular as well was, you know, as a result of having consumed these kind of Netflix type services and been customers of Amazon and so on, there's much higher expectations for things like personalization. So again, for brands and marketers, when you're thinking about building the digital experiences of the future, Gen Z expects that same level of personalization uh, that they get from an Amazon or a Netflix from almost every website that they that they visit. So there's another key area where you know technologists and and, I, and uh, marketers are going to have to work together to to solve this challenge. And you know probably nowhere does this intersection of internet dependence and uh, you know this thirst for entertainment uh, combine more than with the growth of TikTok. 
Uh, TikTok users spend on average of 52 minutes a day on the app, apparently. Uh, I'm pretty confident my teenage daughter spends a lot more than that using it. Um, but overall, TikTok usage grew 180% among Gen Z in 2020. So a huge, uh, staggering amount of growth on that platform. Now, technology dependence is, is more prevalent than ever. We've, we've discussed and covered that. But we've also seen a difference in you know, the uh, way in which uh, the technology is used. So Gen Z and millennials in particular, relying on it particularly, uh, more than other generations, as I mentioned, the second highest use case for connecting, you know, to friends and for maintaining and building their social networks. So, you know, whilst every generation has said that they rely on technology more than before the pandemic, uh, that figure is highest for Gen Z and millennials. Um, um, but, you know, Gen Z and millennials also score far more highly on the social aspects of technology use. So feeling more connected to the world around them or making new friends online uh, for the first time, which you can see, you know, Gen X and, and Boomers have very low scores for those, those questions. And, you know, this has been well documented, of course, um, you know, Eric Schmidt uh, summed it up really well, the kind of ex-Google uh, CEO, when he said that, you know, in March uh, 2020, you know, we saw 10 years of progress um, in terms of digital adoption in just a couple of months, uh, you know, as the early stage of the pandemic played out. But, you know, we've seen in the latest research, you know, 37% of Gen Z, you know, tried online classes or did online school for the first time. You know, 70% increase the amount of streaming video, again, you know, playing into that entertainment narrative. 28% of millennials tried online grocery shopping for the first time, and 27% of boomers, who are traditionally the latest adopters of technology, you know, probably under uh, you know duress and having no other options, tried telehealth for the first time. So you know, huge growth uh, in digital consumption uh, through the pandemic. We can see this across all the various categories here. So this is showing the growth uh, for each generation in consumption of you know, each of these channels, uh, you know, through the pandemic compared to the previous year. So, you know, we can see with Gen Z, you know, on the far left, you know, 68% on streaming video, video chat, messaging, social media. This all again talks into this theme of, you know, technology and the web being about, you know, social interactions and entertainment. But, you know, even, you know, boomers, um, you know, 39%, 36%, 27%, uh, you know, increasingly turning to technology, you know, in order to, you know, maintain their connections with friends and family. And on the far right, you see the, you know, more uh, unusual use cases, I guess, but, you know, online dating, for example, seeing a 23%, you know, surge uh, from Gen Z during, during the pandemic. It was also a year of firsts for every generation, essentially. Um, you know, roughly a third of Gen Z tried online video chat, uh, had their first online class experience and first online food delivery. Um, we saw about a quarter of Gen Z trying online gaming, online grocery shopping and, you know, digital money transfer. And, you know, a third of Gen Z may expect to continue with things like online food delivery uh, after the pandemic. So, you know, that's a good segue into the fact that, you know, these trends were not one off. Uh, they weren't something that's come and going to go as the pandemic recedes. But this is a permanent way in which the digital world is rebuilding how we go about uh, socializing, how we go about transacting and how we go about learning as well as communicating. Because, you know, in the last year, the pandemic has forced everybody to adapt to a world dominated by digital interactions. And, you know, we can see this as well through, um, you know, the, the growth of specific trends around, uh, you know, e-commerce, for example, um, and banking. You know, 34% of Gen Z expects to continue with digital money transfer. 57% of Gen Z and 68% of millennials expect to maintain their digital habits uh, after the pandemic. And 25% of boomers say they will continue with telehealth moving forward.
And again, we can see how this plays out in the commercial world. You know, Square's Cash App has seen a monumental rise in popularity over the last year. And this is powered again primarily by Gen Z and also by millennials. But at the same time, of course, you know, some habits and old habits are, are hard to break in many areas. And, you know, you can see this interesting difference uh, across the generation when it comes to where people expect to do the majority of their shopping next year. On this question, we saw, you know, 54% of Gen Z expecting to do their shopping either online or, you know, partly online, uh, whereas boomers, 75% expected them to go back to in-store. Um, but even so, you know, if you're a retailer that has physical outlets as well as an online uh, channel, you know, this has really profound implications for, you know, how you're probably going to be serving primarily one demographic versus another, uh, you know, in each of those challenges, in each of those channels, sorry. Now, Another really clear uh, insight from our research was the frustration that boomers feel with online shopping in particular. And this is clearly driving this desire to go back to in-store. And it means you know, e-commerce businesses really have some significant issues to address if they're going to win back uh, you know, the loyalty of, of boomers and, and to an extent Gen X in a post-pandemic world. The primary drivers of frustration are you know, things like slow delivery and delivery issues in general, like shipping costs out of stock items and so on. These, these were frustrations across every generation. Um, more specific to boomers was not being able to see, touch or try items on. Um, you know, we didn't see this same level of frustration with other generations. You can see the 61% number, which is far higher uh, than any of the other generational cohorts. Um, but, you know, overall, you can definitely see that, you know, shipping, um, related issues were, were significant. Uh, interestingly, for Gen Z and millennials, one of the key uh, you know areas where they want to see improvements is you know more reviews, uh, reviews by you know validated uh, you know consumers. So Gen Z in particular places a lot of uh, you know credibility on you know peer recommendations or you know recommendations from people like them. In fact, far more than they do on things like celebrities or you know influencers and so on. Now, again, you know, example of how these issues, you know, have played out. You know, Peloton had, you know, hyper growth of their exercise bike uh, business during the pandemic. There's a lot of businesses that were primarily, you know, serving things like exercise at home and, you know, home renovations and DIY saw, saw rapid growth, um, but, you know, received some incredibly negative customer feedback and, uh, you know, also bad press around slow delivery, uh, which, you know, in some cases, of course, is out of retailers' hands when it comes to supply chains that are disrupted by the pandemic. Now, we can see here how, you know, getting consumers what they want on time is critical to how we engineer our e-commerce experiences moving forward. Uh, the things that are important, accurate estimation of delivery times and availability is top, especially amongst boomers. Tracking of products once ordered, easier returns, um, ad-free experiences, you know, there's uh, some frustration around that as well. Um, you know, but nearly a quarter of Gen Z and millennials would like better product displays and transparent reviews. Um, Gen Z is uh, also focused on more security at, at checkouts, for example. Now, you know, differences uh, between the generations here in terms of uniquenesses uh, for things they value during online shopping experiences. You know, with millennials, 24% want the ability to split bills into multiple payments, uh, which, you know, I'll come on to on the next slide in a little bit more detail. Um, but for boomers and Gen X, a physical product is everything. Like, does it look like, you know, in real life, what it looks like on the site? Uh, you know, is the delivery time, you know, um, you know, realistic? Uh, you know, they want to know that what they're going to get is what they're expecting to get. Uh, you know, essentially, you know, substituting an in-store experience for an online experience as closely as possible. Uh, as I mentioned, Gen Z and millennials, you know, value transparent customer reviews, you know, really highly. And um, Gen Z and millennials also, and I'll talk more about this, um, they also stand apart from other generations in the importance they attach to social causes. 
So they will join brands rather than buy from brands. And, you know, they will purchase or stop purchasing from brands uh, that are aligned to causes that they either do or don't believe in. And this is really important for marketers to understand uh, because, you know, it can play out very well or very badly. Now, in terms of, you know, splitting bills into, into multiple payments, you know, we've seen this play out in the, uh, you know, rise of multi-payments in particular, buy now, pay later. Uh, we've seen, you know, huge deals in this space, for example, Square Australian, uh, acquiring Australia's afterpay, you know, in a $29 billion deal uh, as this pay, um, you know, trend has taken off. And, you know, it's ironic in some ways that millennials being the first uh, generation to ditch credit cards uh, have probably been a, a generation that has adopted uh, these payment models more, uh, perhaps a substitute effect, essentially. Now, I mentioned uh, that Gen Z and millennials stand apart when it comes to social conscience. And, you know, you can see that here, 71% of Gen Z will buy from companies that support social causes, whereas for, it's only an issue for 47% of boomers. Um, and, you know, the interesting thing around this as well is, is where the trend is going. Uh, so what we've seen over the years of the research that we conducted is, you know, that Gen Z is becoming more socially engaged, um, but Gen X and boomers are declining. So Gen X has, you know, decreased their cause-driven purchasing, you know, modestly since 2019. Boomers more dramatic. They've decreased by 22% over the last two years because they were uh, scoring 60% uh, when we did the survey in 2019. So, you know, in terms of social causes, this is a really key area for brands to think about and be aware of in terms of their Gen Z and millennial um, consumers. Again, examples of this, are, you know, brands such as Patagonia, for example, have been, you know, leading the way on, you know, taking a stand on social issues, really picking up the mantle from early innovators in this, this space, like the body shop and Ben and Jerry's ice cream, um, you know, did in, in the past. And, you know, a key consideration for marketers is really how to tap into this, but in an authentic way, because Gen Z values authenticity highly. So any uh, attempt to, you know, smear corporate social responsibility in a, in a way that is unauthentic is going to lead to this audience being quickly disengaged. Aside from shopping and e-commerce, another area uh, where we've seen significant and probably permanent change is le online learning. Now, you know, interestingly, again, we see big differences between the generations here, probably, you know, unsurprising to an extent, given the younger generations have been, you know, impacted by homeschooling and, you know, also the most likely to be pursuing additional qualifications. Um, but interestingly, nearly half of Gen Z believe online learning is effective, um, whereas, you know, half of boomers don't have any experience of it at all. Um, and, you know, the vast majority um, of Gen Z and millennials as well, not only have experience of it, but they have experience in multiple settings. Um, and we actually saw 33% or a third of Gen Z, um, you know, around a third of millennials say they actually learn better online than in person and actually prefer online learning than, than, than real school. So, you know, expect to see some fundamental changes uh, as a result of this in the, in the coming years. So, you know, the pandemic has also changed learning as, as well as working. Um, you know, we've, we've seen obviously, you know, big shift to, to work from home since the pandemic, probably led by the technology sector who, you know, have made it permanent in many cases, including, you know, our own at WP Engine, um, moving to a remote first model. Um, but, you know, interestingly, most of Gen Z, Gen X, and millennials would prefer to work remotely during the pandemic. But there is a, a, a catch to this. You know, millennials um, and Gen Z are all a, both a little bit fearful that remote work will stunt their careers um, and, you know, not being seen as visibly and not being in an office environment may negatively impact them during those critical years when they're building their careers, uh, which is a fear that far fewer boomers and Gen X have 
uh, presumably being more established in their careers. Um, but on the positive side, you know, as you would imagine, you know, fit between 15 and 60 percent of Gen Z and millennials believe their work life balance has improved. So there's kind of this trade off, right? My life is better, but I'm worried I might not be able to get ahead. So that takes us on to the last trend uh, that we had, um, which is, you know, what we're calling rise. And this is really talk about how, you know, Gen Z is, is rising up to be the most entrepreneurial generation ever. And, you know, a staggering 61% of Gen Z uh, have said that they're planning to start their own business, which is a huge number when you consider that, you know, roughly one in nine are self-employed today. Uh, and, you know, so we're expecting to see a significant increase in, in entrepreneurial activity uh, as this generation continues to come of age. Um, as you say, you know, 51% of Gen Z planning to start a business, 41% of millennials um, and, you know, dropping right down for, for Gen X and boomers. So, you know, expect to see innovation, uh, you know, coming from, from, from Gen Z. And... You know, we're seeing a difference as well in the types of businesses that people are looking to start. Uh, things like retail have consistently scored uh, highly across the generations in the years that we've done this survey. Uh, but we're also seeing, you know, obviously technology play a higher role in the younger generations. Uh, interestingly, technology has dropped um, since 2019 for Gen Z. Um, and, you know, there's some different ideas about why that might be the case. I think one of them is that Gen Z tends to be a bit more blind to technology. So whereas, you know, a boomer might describe an online retail business as a technology business, uh, Gen Z would describe it as a retail business, for example. So, you know, they don't see the technology, you know, as visibly as, as a part of the business. Um, but it's not really a surprise. Some people say it's because this generation is younger, they've got less at risk, they don't have mortgages, they don't have kids. Um, but we actually think it's more than that. We think it's because, you know, this generation is uh, self-starters. You know, they know they can teach themselves anything they need to know online um, and they back themselves um, to overcome the challenges that are ahead. And, you know, there's some really great examples of, of Gen Z uh, entrepreneurs. I have one in my family, in fact, who, uh, who has a, a vintage clothes business, which is hugely successful. Um, but... Um, you know, we've also seen, uh, you know, Mazaya Bridges, uh, for example, build a 600,000 bow tie business uh, at 16 years old. We've seen people like Jordan Barkley uh, with a stream YouTube channel build significant businesses, uh, you know, off the back of, uh, you know, online games and so on as well. And, you know, these entrepreneurs are really picking up the mantle from, you know, the likes of Canvas and Atlassians and Big Commerce and others. Now, another interesting trend that we saw was, and this was really significant change over the years of the survey is the growth of personal websites. Uh, we've seen, you know, the number of people uh, having a personal website go from 11 to 38 percent, so 3x increase over the period in question. And we believe this plays into the narrative in terms of the importance that Gen Z puts on their personal brand. Uh, millennials had kind of technology, you know, evolve uh, on them and you know, perhaps, uh, you know, Gen Z has learned some of the lessons about how, you know, your, your digital pres presence and your online uh, actions can have, you know, potentially negative impacts in the real world. And they value their personal brand very highly. And a personal website is, you know, a way of being able to, you know, tell their story. And unsurprisingly as well, you know, platform of choice, um, as is typically the case, is WordPress, which is great news for WP Engine, 41% uh, of the web. Uh, you know, now built on that platform, expected to be 50% by 2025. So, you know, what we've seen, I guess, over the, the last year of the pandemic is, you know, everyone's been compelled to move and adapt to a world dominated by digital interactions. You know, ready or not, people are forced to communicate, conduct transactions, conduct business, learn uh, completely online. And as a result of this, a new generation of consumers uh, has been in, introduced to a wide range of digital interactions for the first time. Uh, Gen Z uh, is very aware of, as I say, their personal brand. And, you know, 52% of them believe, for example, their internet usage will tell you as much about a person as their credit score. And 60% of them believe that your online reputation will determine your dating options. So, you know, this is a generation Gen Z that is empowered, connected, practical, 
uh, empathetic and they're self-starters and they want to make a difference in the world fueled by technology um, you know they value uniqueness authenticity creativity shareability and purpose so you know that's it for me um, you know wp engine is is proud to be a leader in the wordpress economy which our recent research showed is a 600 billion global industry uh, you know, we're proud to serve 8% of the web that touches one of our hosted properties every day. And we're proud of the partners uh, that we have in our agency ecosystem who build uh, innovative and award-winning digital experiences every day. So, you know, thank you for listening. And I'll be around for a couple more minutes if you have questions. If you'd like more information, you can visit us at wpengine.com. Awesome. Mark, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Perfect. So I have a couple of questions for you. Mm -hmm. Let's see. The first one I got was, um, let's see if I can pronounce this right, Mali, uh, who is from Thailand. So Mali wanted to know, let me see if I can read this correctly. So what of the information did you find that... Uh, trying to rephrase this a little bit. What of the information did you find that you uh, didn't believe or surprised you the most just as a marketer? Because I know some of it, you know, when we're putting these surveys together, there's what we're often off, often looking for. But then when you come back and see it right in front of your face, it can look quite different. Yeah, that's a great question, Marley. And I think, you know, for me, the most surprising one was the um, figure around dependency, internet dependency, the fact that Gen Z was not the most internet dependent, at least not in the Australian research. Um, so, you know, that was a standout for me as a parent of a Gen Z you know, daughter, um, you know, I view them as completely addicted to technology. Um, so it actually surprised me that millennials uh, scored higher than Gen Z in, in our local research, at least. And I was interested as to why that was perhaps a uniquely Australian phenomenon. Uh, also, I have a question here from Fatima, who is in India, and she wants to know what of the information that you found do you think will bounce back uh and, and i know this let me sort of paraphrase this one as well we have information that you took through this period and a lot of it's through the lens that we're living through but every day seems to be a roller coaster during and coming out of the pandemic what do you think uh that you you know you mentioned a couple of things where you said we anticipate or they anticipate coming out of the pandemic they were going to do you know, buy more online and buy more of this, that, or the other. Was there anything in there, basically, I guess, that surprised you or made you think this is not the, the actual habit that they're responding to the question with? Yes. I added, a lot, I added a lot more color commentary <laughs> around that question because now I'm interested as well. Yeah, that's another, another great question. And, uh, you know, I think... You know, there's a, there's a number of different answers to that potentially. But, um, you know, I think uh, when it comes to people's careers, right, I think that's that's a key focus yeah. area, particularly Great for point. Gen Z, you know, being 25 years and under. And, you know, the fact that they had concerns that being remote may hold back their careers, that does make me wonder how long a purely remote work uh, mm -hmm. stance will last post pandemic or do people feel you know the need to get back together in a hybrid environment it's one that we have you know as a business we are virtual first but you can probably see i'm in an office now uh, because we've yeah. identified that there is value in getting people together as well so i think you know that would be one area where i think people's stated intention of you know, re remaining remote may start to change a little bit as some of those negative impacts or the challenges around remote work play out. But I think in terms of the general shift to digital, the increase in digital consumption, that's been something that we've seen, you know, expectations continue to increase and adoption continue to increase through each year of the research. So I'm not expecting that suddenly people will stop online shopping or people will stop using social media, you know, increasingly to connect with their, you know, and, and video, you know, streaming to connect with their friends and family. In fact, you know, in terms of forward looking statements, people had very high expectations around things like, you know, AI, 
about you know machine learning websites talking to each other um, and you know in particular around you know voice and you know um, you know gestures as a way of you know controlling devices uh, accessing the web so I think you know the technology side will continue to evolve but how we adapt to it as as human beings and how we relate to each other um, you know online versus offline I think there's still some unanswered questions yeah there are not a lot of vice presidential titles or promotions given because somebody increased their follower count it's just a little bit of difference in the corporate world but Joyce asks a great question there are many first I'm going to read it so I'm not paraphrasing anymore there are many first times this year do you think that's because of necessity or more because of boredom it's a great question <laughs> That's a good question. I think, you know, again, you can see a difference between the generations here, right? What, what we tend to see is, and we've seen this throughout history, right? The younger generations lead change, right? So younger generations are curious about technology. They were proactively adopting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, would boomers have adopted telehealth? Was it not for the pandemic? Probably not, right? Would be my read on that. So I think, you know, what it's done is it's accelerated and pushed adoption um, from, you know, the emerging market has become mainstream in a very quick period of time. Mm -hmm. now, I think that probably would have happened anyway, but I think having realized the benefits of telehealth, for example, we've seen boomers intend to keep using it, right? They realize it's more convenient to access a doctor, mm -hmm. you know, from their home than, you know, have to traipse into a, a surgery and wait, you know, an hour to get seen by someone. Um, so, you know, I think, uh, you know, there's things where there's clear benefits all around, but maybe people needed a bit of a push uh, to get using it, to get over inertia. Those are the things that I think are permanent changes. Well, it was a fantastic presentation. I found myself laughing because even as the MC, I have access to all the slides. However, I was grabbing my phone because I wanted to take pictures of several of them on the screen as well. So uh, fantastic job. Really appreciate it, Mark. Have a wonderful day.